Okay, full disclosure. When I first started doing this video, I had the intentions of creating a testing environment, finding out results, and reporting those results in a video. After I finished my testing, I quickly realized that this is going to be more of a discussion and less of a test. So let me explain just a little bit. In today's video, I wanted to test out H.264 against H.265 and see which one could perform better as a media file for the Plex media server. Now in these tests, I wanted to find out which one could give you better performance out of your server, i.e. how many transcoded streams or how many direct streams can you get out of each codec. So as I approach this, I went into Handbrake and I took my Back to the Future video file that I've used for all of my previous tests and I converted them using the default settings in Handbrake. Now, of course, this did drop the bit rate considering I kept all of the uh, options in Handbrake to default, so I think it dropped it almost in half, if not a little bit more. But the reason why I did this is because I wanted to take a base file that had the same default settings for each one, with the only major difference being the codecs chosen. So before I jump into the discussion and confusion part of this test, I will go ahead and report my results. Now the Back to the Future file that I used for my testing you might recognize and from my Battle OS series. It's the same video file that I used for all of my previous tests when I was testing out different operating systems to see which one performed the best. Furthermore, for my operating system, I end up using Windows 7 Professional 64-bit because it was the easiest to install to get this test up and running. And of course, just like my previous test, it was tested on an i7-3770 chip with the hyper-threading disabled, so it's only running with four cores. I do this to limit the horsepower of it a little bit so I can get my test results without having to run a massive amount of streams. So I encoded my already H.264 file into a lower bitrate and different container H.264 file, I ran it through the Plex transcoder to see how many direct and transcoded streams I could get. With this test, I was able to get six transcoded streams, going from the original file all the way down to two megabits per second. That's six transcoded streams. Six. Now on top of that, I was actually able to get three additional direct streams to play, giving me a grand total of nine streams, six transcoded and three direct. I felt this was a pretty good result, something to start with. I liked it overall, but I took it a step further and I tested the optimization for mobile. With that test, I was able to get a maximum speed of 4.9x, which is actually not too bad. It's not terribly great, but not bad at all. And this is where things get a little fuzzy. I started to test the H.265 file. Again, circling back, all default settings, MP4 container, only difference being H.265. And I would love to be able to tell you that I got a set amount of streams that was reliable that I could report, but unfortunately, I really didn't. You see, in my test, I was only able to get two to three transcoded streams at the same time. And I, I'm giving you this variation here because I was technically able to start three transcoded streams at the same time, but if I watched it long enough, it would start to buffer. Now I ran this test for a long time and sometimes it would play it consistently, I think up to like 20 or 25 minutes I watched this movie and none of the streams buffered. But since in my test I run the same test multiple times, I even restart the server just to make sure that everything is cleared out and there's nothing lingering in the background and I rerun the same test to make sure and confirm my results. But while doing this, I noticed that sometimes it buffers on three streams, sometimes it doesn't. So it was very inconsistent. And on top of all this, I wasn't able to get much more than one direct stream, if that, on top of the transcoded streams, of course. And to further this test even more, I also optimized the same media for the same mobile platform and was only able to get 3.1. But most of the time it hovered down in the low twos. It was pretty sad. So right off the bat, I can tell you that H.264 versus H.265 is almost dropping the performance of my server by half, if not a little bit more. To give you a little bit of backstory for myself, when H.265 was uh, first started being talked about, I kind of sort of approached it a little bit, learned a little bit about it, and decided it just wasn't ready for me to embrace. The encoding was a little bit more complicated, took a little bit more horsepower to do. There was some, you know, hardware transcoding issues, some, you know, support things like that I, I just it was just one of those things I was like hey eh, 264 works perfect for me why worry about it now so fast forward in time and here I am wanting to test it out and I realized that 
I'm a little ignorant on the subject. In my testing phase, I of course use the same testing methods that I used before, where I, I load up the Chrome browser with the Plex interface, and I just open up multiple tabs or windows, and I just run it until it crashes, or buffers, technically. But with this, I'm kind of concerned that maybe there's some issues with Chrome handling H.265 natively. But really that shouldn't matter because if I'm transcoding with Plex, it should transcode that video file to a supported format. But with that said, that gives me my results of only two to three transcoded streams at the same time. As far as the direct stream goes, I mean that could be explained by some of my ignorance as far as not being able to handle even one direct stream on top of the transcoded streams because technically it's probably still transcoding it. So this leads to the discussion of H.265 with the community. I'd like to know if anyone out there has actually implemented H.265 into their media server, has started using that for the media files, and if so, what have you found as far as usability and performance? Are you running into the same issues that I'm having where the performance of your server is almost cut in half? Or has it worked out better for you? One thing I can tell you is that the video file for the H.265 is considerably smaller by almost two gigabytes. So obviously it's gonna be more efficient, but it also takes more horsepower to encode or decode. So, eh. Now on top of all this, I do know that there has been some GPU supported transcoding features that have been hinted at or in beta testing with Plex Media Server. That's something I have not even read up on or taken a look at at all. I do plan on doing that in the future, but I am kind of curious if having a GPU or for that matter, a newer GPU that has native H.264 265 support in it, if that would help the Plex transcoder at all. I think this really boils down to just needing to do more research, maybe scour through the Plex forums and you know see what's out there or if you have any experience let me know below I'd love to hear about it maybe a way to alter my test to get more accurate results keep in mind that if I'm running tests like this I do need to be able to run it on a client that I can run multiple versions of anywhere of you know between three to nine different plays at the same time I do like the idea of h.265 being able to give you the same quality with a lower bitrate file or a lower file size I, I, I mean I do like that but it's one of those things that if it's gonna cut the performance of your server in half, is it really worth it? So let me know in the comments if you've implemented this yourself, what your results are, things that you've learned, or maybe why you're just gonna stick with H.264. So like and subscribe below, guys, if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.